it might be time to plant tomatoes in Georgia, but it's also time to pile up some of them because I don't think I'm gonna use all of these. We had such excellent germination rate with Mary's heirloom seeds that even though we tried to only put one or two seeds in each cell, we have two plants in every cell. So we're gonna divide them up and share them with friends and neighbors. So you see there's two nice thick healthy stems but because they're getting overcrowded up top they are getting a little spotted or yellow during this transition period so we're going to remedy that so this is my mix i have some pro mix potting soil some worm casting and some job's organic fertilizer i usually don't fertilize my seedlings unless i'm potting them up so i'm gonna pot up into these three to four inch pots and I will add just about halfway of soil put the seedling in as deep as I can put it and then top it off with this but this has to be hydrated first a lot of the potting mixes that are really good quality are made out of Peter cocoa and that's hydrophobic so it doesn't absorb you see how light and dusty it is so we got to get it nice and wet before we put it in our pots so hydrophobic is just what it sounds like hydro meaning water phobic meaning afraid this soil is afraid of water so it barely absorbs any so you have to really give it a good stir and we call this making brownie mix we're making our brownie batter I used to make huge batches of this at Callaway Gardens Butterfly Center with my friends Nikki and Paula. And we used to have to mix up a lot of this for a lot of transplanting. All right, so once I get it good and mixed with the tool, I go ahead and I use my hands to make sure I didn't miss any clumps. And I break those clumps up. See that little clump? dry as dust inside and I want to make sure there are no dry spots in my transplanting soil Tomatoes are real easy to separate and pot up. They handle a lot of abuse and all I gotta do is pull them apart and tangle out the root ball without ripping too much of it apart. So even if I do, they are going to root all the way up to this set of leaves and I'm gonna bury them that deep. So I just begin to pull and you can feel where the roots are wanting to come apart. So I just gently let them come all the way apart. And that's plenty of roots for both of these plants to have. And then they're gonna root from here to here, depending on how deep I can get them in these pots. So I always get my label ready. As soon as I have my transplants going in, I put them all the way down as deep as I can plant them. And then I'm going to fill that soil all the way up. tamp down around the roots and keep adding, keeping the plant centered in the pot. And if your plants are really leggy and really long and you need to transplant them, you can pinch off the lower leaves and bury even deeper if you have a deep enough pot. Well, 
I still have more plants to transplant. I just finished using the last bit of the soil I had pre-made and it's dinner time. So I'm gonna call it quits here and do some more of this tomorrow afternoon. But before I call it a day, I do need to make sure I check the evening forecast and make sure it's not gonna go below 60 degrees because tomatoes really don't like that. And if it is, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in my garden shed. And before I do that, I am going to soak them to make sure there are no air pockets that may dry out the roots. I'm gonna make sure I don't cause any damage by using a hard stream of water. So I'm just using my misting setting and I'm just gonna go over each tray several times until I see the soil settle down into the pot with no bumps and valleys, no hills and valleys, just nice smooth soil surface on top. That'll indicate that most of the moisture has been filled, that'll indicate that most of the air pockets have been filled with moisture to help these babies grow big and strong.